Welcome to Western Sydney Television News. I'm Christina Pollard. In this bulletin, the Queen's Baton makes its way through Penrith, Blacktown prepares to celebrate Lunar New Year, and we road test the latest on four wheels. But first, the Blue Mountains famous Winter Magic Festival has been postponed for 2018. The festival committee released a statement saying better ways to resource the annual event were needed to meet the requirements of holding it. The committee thanked volunteers and Blue Mountain City Council for their efforts in making the event a success over the last two decades. It aims to come back with an even bigger and better festival in the future. The Queen's Baton has made its way through Penrith ahead of this year's Brisbane Commonwealth Games. 18 people carried the baton on day 41 of the relay, with Penrith one of only four metropolitan New South Wales locations chosen for its 10-day route across the state. The relay is travelling a record 233,000 kilometres around the world, and while in Australia it will be carried by 3,800 baton bearers. Thousands of people lined the route from Tench Reserve to Jamison Park to watch the relay, which was followed by a family fun day. Tens of thousands of people are expected to celebrate Lunar New Year at Blacktown's Nurragingi Reserve. 2018 is the Year of the Dog and award-winning ice sculptor Kenji Agawa is expected to showcase his skills by carving a giant ice dog. The event will also feature traditional lion dancing as well as a fireworks display. Blacktown's home to 186 ethnicities speaking 182 different languages and Mayor Stephen Barley says the event will celebrate the many cultures that recognise Lunar New Year. The Blue Mountains historic Hydro Majestic Hotel will go back in time later this month to host the Roaring Twenties Festival. Kicking off with a community Charleston for charity in front of the hotel pavilion, festival goers can don their best feather boa as patrons turn up in their most sophisticated 1920s gear for the naughty knees up on February 24. Parramatta will celebrate its namesake during the third annual Eel Festival in March. The festival celebrates the city's indigenous heritage and the eel's significance to the local Darug people. A full program of events is planned to take place at Elizabeth Farm on March 11. The Sydney property market remains a hot topic and Darren Latty from PRD Nationwide Penrith says Western Sydney is a big part of the conversation, particularly regarding jobs. So the question everyone's been asking me for this year is what's the real estate market going to do in Western Sydney? So in our opinion, we've been doing a lot of research and we can see that there's opportunities being created in Western Sydney that the areas never had before. And by opportunities, we mean jobs. Traditionally, residents of Western Sydney had to travel over an hour to areas like Chatswood or Sydney CBD to find a well-paid high-skilled job. These opportunities are now being presented locally. Residents of Penrith, for example, can get a country train to Parramatta within 23 minutes. So we feel that the job creation is going to drive the interest in property. The other key aspect, other than jobs, is lifestyle choices. So people today no longer accept having to travel three or four hours a day for work. They want to live close to where they work and they want a job that challenges them. So people are looking for lifestyle choices close to work. With work opportunities being created in Western Sydney, that's going to create more demand for property. So we believe that there's prospects for this year, a growth between four and eight percent of capital. So where are the jobs going to come from, you might ask. Projects like the Western Sydney Airport in stage one will create 35,000 jobs. You've got Sydney Science Park, you've got upgrades to all the major hospitals in Western Sydney, you've got major road construction, um, and you've also got private construction. So traditionally the best place to invest is wherever the government's investing their money. There's no doubt that the government's investing huge volumes of money in Western Sydney. The private sector is following suit. So the private sector, the government are all choosing to invest in Western Sydney, and we believe that the mums and dads will soon choose to as well. Western Sydney Television News hit the road this week to get the lowdown on the latest on what to expect on four wheels. David Canole got behind the wheel to deliver this report. 
It's been one of the most hotly anticipated cars to hit the Australian market of recent times. We've got it. This is the Kia Stinger. Comes in two versions, a V6 with 500 newton metres of torque or 272 kilowatts of peak power. This is the Turbo 4. This has got 353 newton metres of torque going through an eight speed transmission. One of the big talking points about the car is that it is a front engine rear wheel drive car because no longer the Falcon or the Commodore for the Aussie market. Let's take a look inside. Kia have certainly looked towards the European market for design influence. Have a look at this dash, very much like an Audi, especially with the way that we've got this seven inch touchscreen rising. Well, actually it doesn't rise, but it looks like it does coming out of the dash. We've also got it drive modes. It'll be eco, smart, custom. Smart actually learns how you drive the car which is a pretty good thing nowadays in Australia. The Kia Stinger comes in three trim levels. We've got the SI, the SLI, and this one, the GT, as I mentioned, with the four and the six cylinder engine. This one, you're looking at around $56,500 plus on roads. It's worth it. Go and see the guys at Great Western Kia for a test drive. And finally, only in Western Sydney could you find driving like this. Two residents have sent in pictures to Western Sydney Television News, the first from a shopping centre in Penrith and the second from the Blue Mountains, proving perhaps it's more difficult to park than we thought. That's all for this Bulletin of Western Sydney Television News. I'm Christina Pollard. Thanks for joining us and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube.